So Arrivals 2.0 have been out for some days and I've had so much fun playing it um, and I've learned a lot. I started off very bad, I will show it very soon uh, and I actually can show it now. If you go to Divisions uh, and if you go to me, I'm currently in a promotion race uh, but I started off with 16th place uh, being in the relegation zone uh, but I've learned a lot from the new Star Arrivals. There are some new tips, I've made these type of videos before but in today's video it will be mainly about the top 5 tips I would personally give to a SAR manager that are new and also some tips that could actually help you guys that are routine managers but want to take SAR Arrivals 2.0 to the next level uh, and yeah, going through the division system, so fantastic, love it uh, and as I said, I'm currently in a promotion race. I will never get first because Duncan disorderly is just destroying the competition. Uh, but podium is not off the table yet. Uh, we are on a tiebreaker with another guy, but he has a bet better score difference than me. Uh, and my score difference is the one thing that um, was letting me down, as you can see on the first day. I didn't have a great experience, although it was still so much fun, but I couldn't get my lineup straight and um, yeah and we can just start off with the tip that I've learned the most in from the first day and I want to show you here on matches because I've played a lot of Star Arrivals but we can start off with uh, the first day where I will use my first tip I think it was uh, starting off, yeah, it was starting off here uh, it was a rough day for me on Star Arrivals 2.0 we started good with Osasuna versus Mallorca but as I said in the video I made I knew nothing about both of those lineups. So I was pretty lucky to get away with a win here. I beat the other guy with five points and then I lost, then I lost, then I lost, then I lost, then I lost five matches in a row. And that is also why my score difference is so bad. And what did I actually learn from that? Play the matches you know and specifically when you play arena. That is so extremely important. And I go on the mistake because I get so excited, I want to play as many matches as possible, I don't want to miss out. But I lost so many arena tickets, and also now you will get one free entry each day. And actually to get arena tickets, now, now you need to get them in missions. So arena tickets will, will be way more valuable also. And remember you also, still I'm in Division 6, but I still lose a lot of reputation points when losing, so it's not that good to just play every match you see on the Sora Rival screen. Uh, and I think that is also why Duncan Disorderly have been doing very great. I think he played a lot of MLS fixtures and he probably know a lot about the MLS fixtures. And as you can see here, he also started pretty low, but then he also learned uh, what was the right things to do and etc. So he's also having a lot of joy in that strategy, although I don't know if that was his strategy. But I think he got like, he was on like 10 points here, and then he just spiked up to first place. So that was very, very fun to see. Uh, so that is the main tip, play the match to know, but in specifically in arena, because uh, you don't want to get relegated because you play too many matches, if that makes sense. And also looking at the matches in specific, uh, for example, it's Friday today. I'm filming this on a Friday. This will probably be a Saturday video. Uh, and if we can go through the different matches here. Which matches would I choose? Probably Serie A and the Serie A match will be Fiorentina versus Napoli. Because I don't know too much about the different leagues here. So there is actually no point of me actually trying to play. I may do it because I love Star Rivals 2.0, so I will most likely play multiple matches here. But that is, isn't smart, that is not smart. Play the things you know, and I know a lot about the Napoli team, so I will choose this as my main fixture. And moving on, choose your tactics carefully. And in specific, in this match, tactic. Fiorentina versus Napoli, I want to use this as an example. And we have, I have picked my team, and you're probably wondering, why do I pick Lobovka? Why do I pick Sambo Agusa? And you guys probably pick your teams first and then choose your tactics. I do the opposite. And especially in recent times, because I started off uh, on the first day of uh, first day of Star Rivals 2.0, I mean. I started off doing that, building my team, then picking my tactic. But the problem is that is that in many cases you get a lot of different type of players. So there will be very hard of you actually choosing the right tactic to actually get up to the 40 points mark because that is huge, especially if you, are, you have just common cards. Uh, so what I'm currently doing is choosing my tactic before. Is Napoli a good possession team? Yeah, they can be in some instances. And therefore I chose Tiki Taka first and then I go through players 
that may get a lot of passes. I know that Lobodka will uh, get a lot of passes. I know that Oliveira will take a lot of passes. I know Sambu Agusa will get a lot of passes. I know Meret as a goalkeeper will get a lot of passes. And also Korachkela is one of the forwards that get the most passes. And they are also playing against Fiorentina, which is a team that tends to give up a lot of possession, which will be very favorable for me when using a Napoli team. And let's say that I uh, that you think because, uh, as we can see here, Samba Gusa, he haven't been doing too great recently. So let's say you think, okay, Yosalda, this is a mistake. You should go for another player. Let's say Kajuste. He has been doing great recently. Uh, he's a Swedish midfielder. Let's go for him instead. And here we can see, if we go continue, Tiki Taka, that is currently off the table almost, because that went down from 179 predicted passes or average passes in their last 15 games to 140 accurate passes, which is a big difference, which in many cases can mean that Kajuste needs to outscore Samba Gusa with 20 points. And do I think that is worth it in the long run? Yeah, in this match it may happen, but consistently, no, I don't think so. And that is why I really like doing this instead. Uh, choosing my tactics first and then building my team around that tactic, because those 40 points could be huge, especially if you just have common cards, which I'm currently having now. So therefore I will be using this strategy now, and I think it's very, very underrated. Uh, and I will choose Kvartskele as captain here. So that is uh, an example number two of something I think is very, very underrated and something that is very important, especially if you want to take sore rivals to the next level. Although in many of the cases, you don't, uh, in some cases, you don't need a winning tactic to actually beat your opponent. But in some cases, especially uh, when you get up the divisions, uh, that may be the difference between you actually getting promoted or staying in the division or getting relegated or staying in the division. Um, and yeah, we actually managed to win Fiorentina versus Napoli. We also won two different matches on the same day as well, which is very exciting. We are currently second in the division. But you can see here that I actually got it completely wrong. This tip was to choose a tactic, then build the team around it. But what I personally forgot was that Fiorentina is third in the league when it comes to keeping possession, and Napoli are first. And when two high possession teams clash against each other, in many of the cases, it's a pretty even possession game, which in this instant, Fiorentina actually were the team that had more possession, which also was a reason because they were at home and also because Napoli scored early. So it was um, a game that f fell into Fiorentina hands when it came to the possession stats. And I did a big mistake here. This could have actually cost me, but uh, luckily I captained Kvaratskhelia, which did very well. and. Therefore, I won this match, but I still think this is a very important tip, but it's so important also to look against which team your team is actually... Uh, if, for example, you have a full stack of one team, it's very important to look which team that team is actually playing against, which I completely forgot, which is a big mistake, and I will ta uh, take up my hands. Uh, but luckily for me, it worked out now, but that is something very important for you guys to keep in mind when building your SAR Rivals 2.0 teams. And now let's move on to the next one, and I have also another example. Here we have it, Fulham versus Manchester City. And I actually uh, wouldn't have gotten this result if it wasn't for this tip. And that is follow or watch the match you play in Arena. And I will give you the reason now. Uh, as you can see on my team right here, uh, the starting lineup, or I actually lost my Arena match with two points, but it could have been a lot worse if I didn't do this tip. Uh, and the reason is that because um, my uh, Nathan Ake, which we can see here that he had in his team, he got injured after, after like 13 minutes or something, very early in the game. And since I watched the game, I knew that I needed to change him out. And therefore I did it, and I took in Kyle Walker, which I, because I watched the game, I saw him on the sideline warming up. So I knew that he was the man that was going to come in. So before the official substitution went out, I made the substitution on Sar Rivals before. So Kyle Walker had almost 80 to 75 minutes to beat the score of Nathan Ake, which was 42. And plus the chances of them getting a clean sheet against Fulham was very high. And Walker is a player that could get those offensive decisives and also get those uh, good AA scores. So actually here I was very unlucky not to beat him by more points. 
Kyle Walker only beat Nathan Ake score by three points. But looking back at it, I think that was the right decision. That is a decision I would do 10 out of 10 times. And therefore, you can get an edge by watching the game or following the game on an app like Footmove, SofaScore, uh, where you get notifications when a player gets injured and you can swap him out fast on some arrivals and get in the potential replacement. So, uh, and that will also be used when a player gets a red card, you can swap him out. Or if a player has a bad game and gets substituted, uh, substituted early, for example, missing four or five big chances and getting like 10 or 15 points, it could be worth it to just get a player, punt on a player that will come on, which will start with 25 points, and if you're lucky, you will also get decisive, and that move would be genius. And so that is the third tip that I think is very underrated, and uh, also uh, why I like uh, when I play matches I actually no something about because then I know which player will come in, for example, for Nathan Ake. He played right back that game, so I knew that Kyle Walker is a, a player that may come in in that position. And also, if I watch the match, I could see which player Pep Guardiola is preparing and etc. So that is something I really, really like. And also talking more about arena tickets, because now they will be very, very important. Doing your daily missions. I have done almost every single daily mission. I need to try to do this one as well. And there will be different missions each day, which you should try to do. I really recommend you to do it because if you can play multiple matches each day, you will have an advantage of those that don't care about the daily missions, than that just get one win in arena each day using the free arena entry that will be um, renewed each day. So that is very simple, just uh, click on it, win an arena match using Gagan pressing. So therefore I could now go in matches and choose a tactic uh, which will be Gagan pressing in another match because I don't want to use it in my Fiorentina versus Napoli and I've already, already explained why. Super sub score more than 60 points with a substitute in an arena match and here we could also go to the last tip I said. You will get three arena tickets for that, so it could be worth it to, for example, substitute in a player that is very, very decisive capable. For example, if you're a striker blanks, if you're left wing blanks, if you're right wing blanks, or an offensive midfielder blanks, you could just swap him out for another that may come on later in the game. And specifically, if there is a close arena match, I wouldn't recommend you to do it, but for example, if you know that you will lose, and if, for example, a player comes in and scores, you may win it, or if you're so far ahead, you could also make a substitution just to try to um, make that challenge possible. So that is also a tip that is very important now because of the limited arena uh, entries you're going to be having. Um, and also, inside information can be key. And I want to uh, use an example here as well, if we go to rivals matches. And that is examples like, uh, I actually want to use Sunday, because if we go to edit line up here, um, there are some uh, differences between uh, the Manchester United lineup that Ten Hag puts out because of his injuries. And now, because players are coming back and etc., uh, if you as a Manchester United fan have those inside informations, when, for example, Bruno Fernandes gets injured uh, or when the centre back gets injured, you know that, um, for example, the set piece situation may change. For example, we have seen that Christian Eriksen, when Bruno Fernandes don't play, take most of the set pieces. He's very influential when on the pitch. But as this as an example, Bruno Fernandes may play, so this will be my lineup. But let's say Bruno Fernandes was injured, Eriksen was predicted to play, that this team could be completely different. I, different. I may change Van Bissaka for Eriksen, I may change Bruno Fernand, uh, Casemiro for Eriksen, and captain him because when he takes set pieces, he can get uh, scores like if we go back. I think you saw that 90 pointer there. Um, but my point is that uh, having inside information, and that isn't real inside information, but information about your teams you follow and team you want to prioritize in. For example, if there are a lot of injured, you know that there are some very low L15 players that you can put into the team. And I want to use an example very, very quickly because uh, in match, this match United game, Lisandro Martinez has L15 of 48. And let's say that he had an L15 of 25 because he, I think he was like one or two games from getting uh, the lowest L15 possible. Um, yeah, 14. Yeah, he was like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. He was one match away from getting the lowest L15 possible. 
So that would have meant that you could have actually gotten Lisanne Martinez into this team, Manchester United team, and then build a lot stronger structure around him with players like Bruno Fernandes, Scott McTominay, Alejandro Garnacho, players with high L15s. Uh, I don't think Scott McTominay have a, have a high L15, but another player like him, Dalot or Van Bissaka. So that is also something you need to take into consideration. Having inside for information could be very key in terms of uh, players coming back from injury that has a low L15 but normally scores very well, or also players that may take set pieces away from another player when he is of course injured, or if he isn't playing well. Uh, and yeah, that will be the tips for today's video. Are you currently enjoying Sorrels 2.0? And as I said, if you're new, remember to use my link in the description to sign out. And my name has of course been Osalde, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye and take care. Peace.